Well, thank you very much. Um, a few years ago, um, some people all over the world discovered that they actually didn't have a phone in their pocket, but it was more of an art studio. Um, and with, within that three years, that group kind of expanded and um, got itself into all kinds of art shows and art galleries. Um, actually had two conferences in New York and in the last year made it into a fine art museum, uh, one of the most important ones in Europe. But um, before, I've, we're going to tell you a bit more about uh, all the history of mobile art and finger painting. Uh, we thought it would be a bit boring to just um, to just speak about it, but we'd rather want to actually collaborate with you. So here's what's going to happen. Fabric is going to start uh, to use uh, an app called SketchShare. As you can see, it's already up and working. Um, and we have set up a Twitter handle, as you can see on the left. It's called Next Orders. So what we want you to do is to, to get out your mobile devices and send out orders of what um, uh, and rules on whatever of how to paint and what to do. It could be like, as you see, um, just some, some weird orders like what hand to use or uh, what color to use um, or all just objects or ideas. So please, everybody, that's the idea for, for this session to uh, create a collaborative um, piece of art. And I also have another iPad to hand out. So. SketchShare allows you to collaboratively, um, collaboratively paint with, with uh, other people. So is there anybody willing to, to start uh, to join Fabric to, to paint? There's a hand coming out, so I'm coming down. I just have to ask you to never press the home button, because that would. <laughs> OK, go for it. Fabric is going to go into the audience, right? Right, so please, during the talk, keep in mind to send out um, some orders. And you guys have to actually look at the, at the stuff. So like I, like I said, this is actually going to be a slide-free presentation, um, since we want to mainly focus on the artwork. But I just want to give you a quick intro of how it all started. And that, like I said before, that was basically like three years ago. Um, when a little app, a small app came out on the iPhone. It was called Brushes. Brushes was developed by Steve Sprang, a former um, developer at Apple. And he was just, uh, he just had enough of Apple and took some time out. He wanted to go into iOS, iOS developing. And he actually, just make sure you can see some of the artwork at least. Um, he actually just, just fooled around with, with an idea of how to make a, a col color picker work on a haptic device, because you actually have your finger over the color you want to pick. Um, Brushes was probably the app that kind of started the whole movement, although I have to say it's not the first app um, that people use to create art on mobile devices. Actually, ever since mobile devices have been out there, like the Nintendo DA, there's been apps that, um, that allowed you to crea create and paint on it. So brushes had, it was a very simple app with, uh, you could create layer and has brushes and stuff and colors, but it had one special feature, and that's the brushes viewer. So what it did is uh, it kind of recorded all your actions you did during painting. So every stroke, every brush type, every color you used um, got recorded. And that way, you could do two things with it. A, you could replay it in a higher size, which means you could actually replay it with higher, uh, high resolution brushes, which gave you an output of, of a, like six times size of the iPhone um, screen. So you could actually print it very ni nicely. But you could also, you were also able to just have a quick look at what's going on here. You could also export it as a movie. Um, so that means all of a sudden you were able to share your process way easier than before. 
So you could actually kind of communicate the way you paint and um, the way you make mistakes very early on, how you kind of cope with it, and how you actually, in the last 20, um, 20 seconds of the, 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 the piece, you kind of polish it and, and finish it. So I just want to quickly show you how this way of showing your artwork kind of stirred and kicked in in ways of collaborating. There's a guy called Matthew Watkins. He lives in Bari, uh, Italy. And we met on Flickr only um, briefly before the piece I'm going to show you. And he posted, a, a from, in my eyes, a kind of unfinished piece on Flickr. And I felt like I should do something with it. So I grabbed it, and I started to paint over it. and. Um, then I showed it back to him, and he's he seen it, and he grabbed it again and developed something. So um, I'm just going to show you quickly a movie of what came out of it. I still need the sound read. I forgot that. Where's the sound? No, where's the sound? white one. like the end of it. Um, again, that was one thing we did in 2009. So it was all done on the iPhone back then. Um, are you still keeping orders? Right. So um, there's some, some new factors that are coming in with all this mobile art and, and having a mobile device with you that lets you create all the time. Um, it's, of course, it's mobility. Uh, and instantaneousness in some way. So that means you, all the time you actually have free of the day because we have so many in-between times in the day when you're like riding the bus and you go to work or you sit in a boring meeting or whatever. Um, all of a sudden you can use this time again. So that's certainly very, uh, very important for the whole thing. But 
personally, I think, and that's why we're trying to talk about the collaboration aspect, um, specifically here at the next, I think the fact that this group of people started to actually share the process way more deeper than it was before, um, and created this group that really connected on an artistic level. And like I said, most of these people haven't met each other for over a year, but kind of knew each other and collaborated and did stuff together. Um, so it was indeed a way of a distributed artist um, as it being many artists that were all over the world. They're painting at the same, on the same canvas. Are they still connected? Are they still connected? Could you do a stroke just to see if it works? There. Right. Ah, there we are. If somebody else wants to try it, maybe you want to. Is there anybody else who wants to? Or you can just hand it on if you want to. So, um, right, like I said, that group of people started to, to kind of connect and, and um, do art shows and whatever. In 2010, we um, collaborated on actually doing our own uh, first conference, um, which happened to take place in New York, which was very exciting because that was actually the, the moment where most of the people met first time. And I'm quickly gonna, gonna Show a little uh, clip from that, I think, just to give you an expression, uh, impression. Rotate. not going to show the whole clip because it takes some time. Um, but like I said, for me, at least personally for me, the, the most important thing was uh, the show at the, at the Art Museum in Hamburg, the Museum for Kunst und Gewerbe, where we, within the, the sh this dielectrical show, was, which was kind of about the work of Jonathan Ives at Apple, uh, got our little own wall um, to hang 10 iPads. And so when I, when I got this, this uh, commission, I actually kind of didn't know what to do, because I'm, I'm not a curator of any kind. I didn't want to tell people what to do, and I didn't want to, to like, check work. So what I did was I just chose 10 people, and I told them to each chose another one and collaborate in some, some, uh, some ways, whatever they want to. So I just want to quickly show you some examples of work that came out there. See if that works nicely. Oh no, certainly no sound. So um, I mentioned Matthew Watkins before. He was the guy we did the um, the kind of mashup together, and he is one of those artists who really likes to mash apps. Like with this one, he uh, used a, an app called Maritim, which kind of lets you create all these fuzzy strokes kind of things and uh, painted over it. And he does lots of these uh, elaborate, he works, he lives in Italy, so you can see that from his, from his stuff. And he chose um, a lady called Lumillion, who does quite some different work. She's uh, more of an iPhonographer, and does all these uh, yeah, kind of rusty old picture style stuff with loads of overlays and stuff. So this is just, just another piece of Matthew. And this is already first collaboration. The one I want to show you is this one, which I really, really love. Um, 
And they, Matthew lives in, in Italy and Lumillion lives in London, I think. So they, they uh, worked like remotely and kind of play back and forth with this stuff. Which is very, very nice, I think. Another example, second one. would be um, John Bavaro, who actually chose four other collaborators um, with very different styles. And they even came up with a funny movie. Should quickly show. There's no sound on here, I think. Um, this was, I think it was assembled in, in iMovie in the end, but most of the animation, or all animation, all artwork was done on either the iPhone or the iPad. I've got to say that John Bavaro is an art professor, so you can, can kind of see that here. Right, this is the point where we're actually going to switch roles, because um, if it's collaboration, it means both people need to do both stuff. So we're going to go back to... Um, the work, and while Fabric connects his iPad, he's going to show you, um, he's going to introduce you to the woven narr narratives. That's one of his collaborative projects he does with Jonathan Growl, right? So we just need to, right? Okay. okay. So I'll grab this. Okay, um, at the conference that Benjamin mentioned in New York, um, I met lots of different artists from all over the globe. And uh, there's one guy in particular who was having a real problem with his iPad. And uh, the battery was playing up. So I lent him my iPad and he did a couple of drawings on it. Thought nothing of that. When I got home a week later, there's a couple of really nice drawings on my pad. Um, realized they were Jonathan's drawings and uh, emailed, made a change and emailed it back to him. Uh, subsequently, he worked on that, emailed it back to me. And um, we started this project, which we've called Woven Narratives. And uh, a lot of the work that I do as a traditional painter and artist, canvas and paper-based, is about finding a narrative within, within the actual process of painting. And I found that through the process of working with Jonathan on some of these images, um, which go back and forth maybe 15, 20 times, um, adding bits very similar to the process we've been working on here, um, but slightly more controlled and over a longer period of time. Sketch, share. Sketch, share. But we start to it's develop pulled, it's been pulled from narratives the within the pieces that we make. And this is a bit slow, but... So we've maybe, over the last two years, created between 50 and, uh, 50 and 60 images, which... Um, sit on our website, which is wovennarratives.com, but also we've actually taken these back into the exhibition realm as well and uh, exhibited these in the UK and, um, and in the US as well. We've got a touring show at the moment. Some of these are actually displayed digitally. Some of them are printed very large, and uh, some of them are printed onto acrylic panels, keeping the aesthetic of the iPad, um, which has been received really well. Um, these pieces have been... I seem to have lost it there. Yeah, I lost it, sorry. Try and connect again. Sorry about that. These pieces are being created uh, mainly in brushes, which um, Benjamin touched on earlier. I was hopefully going to play one back to show you. But, uh, Trying to fix it. Sorry. And the beauty as an artist working with this new technology in terms of something as simple as brushes is actually being able to play back the process and actually unearth the actual process of painting. Normally, with a canvas, you paint over it and that, that stage is gone. But it's really nice to actually be able to evaluate the work in a different way by actually seeing it back. Okay. This one, can we connect. Go Sorry about that, but that's really just, that was just the only way to get both iPads on there. Screen. Okay, so I'll try that again there. So I'll just zoom into brushes here. Um, so this is a, a piece that we worked on. Uh, we did some work in San Francisco, and uh, we did some 
real media painting, but also spent maybe two days creating a suite of work um, together. This guy started off with uh, a very simple drawing with a guy in his underpants, which then you know, develops over time, different layers build up, and you can see how it becomes more painterly um, as it progresses. And this is very similar to the way we both individually work on, uh, on canvas as well, but it's just very quick, you don't get dirty. I can, I can paint in bed, I can paint in the bath, I can paint on the tube, you know, it's, uh, it's fantastic. And uh, the whole collaboration side of things, you know, adds that additional element. And these can stop at any point and then be restarted or taken in different directions. Some of these have maybe 10, 15 different versions of the paintings which we're working on simultaneously. Um, we can see here there's just uh, literally hundreds of the, the things on here. It's just a little bit slow here. I think we may have lost the connection again. Oh, there we go. So this is another of the San Francisco pieces. So a lot of the process is very much um, akin to a type of visual archaeology, actually making the marks, then finding something within, within the shapes that are created, which is something that you know, this medium is really, really great to uh, work with. And I think we'll wrap it up. So as I say, this is an example of working brushes. The, uh, the app that we're using, well, that Benjamin's using here, is, uh, is called SketchShare. It allows up to four different users to uh, anywhere in the world with a Wi-Fi connection to, to draw together and simultaneously see other people's drawings appear on your, your pad, which is you know, quite a magical experience the first time you actually, uh, actually get to use that. And um, this, I see this very much as another tool in, in my arsenal as an artist, really. I still make work um, traditionally. Public art commissions is something that I do a lot of. Have we got the example on there of the... Um... Right. I've been doing quite a lot of uh, large-scale public artwork recently, and I've just got one piece which I'd like to share with you, which was painted on, on the iPad, um, and is actually installed on glass. This is etched into, uh, into glass, and it's quite a nice link between the uh, actually painting on the glass and then the final piece being uh, etched onto glass here. This is uh, a building which is three stories high. It's maybe about the width of um, four or five terraced houses. So it's quite nice actually going from something on glass of this scale and then blowing it up. This was a vector-based program which this was um, created in. So you can scale up to whatever size. And this was a collaborative project that I did with the local community where this new library build um, was installed, and some of the images were designed by children. So it was a really nice, rounded project with uh, children being introduced to the technology as well. All right. So I think it's about time to stop, right? So just a quick look at the, like at the final piece. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, it got a little bit bumpy along the road, but that's the connection. We actually brought our own Wi-Fi router here just to secure it would work. So, um, just to wrap it up, the final kind of message is probably that we all got, uh, with these mobile devices, we have some creative tools uh, right away in our pockets and we can use it all the time. Painting is just like one thing we could do, there's movies and stuff and whatever. Um, and we want to invite you to actually share, uh, to actually join a bit later at the, um, at the session in the arena, where we will have more time to uh, talk about different kind of apps and, um, different kind of styles, and where we will try to um, paint paintings based on input again within the time frame of 15 minutes, and you can basically just order work. And we hope we can print it out, you can take it home and stuff. Um, yes, yeah, so we've got this session called Next Kitchen where we'll be in the arena where you can order artwork and we'll hopefully make artwork to order, which you can then print and uh, you can take away with you. So it's a bit of an experiment, a bit of a fun session, but we're looking forward to that and hope some of you can, can join us. Thank you. Thanks very much.